Okay, so question number four says, what is the Lewis structure, hybridization, polarity, molecular geometry, and also bond angle of oxygen difluoride? Okay, so when writing out the Lewis structure, we first need to calculate the total number of valence electrons for the molecule. So oxygen has six, and fluorine has seven. And since we have two fluorine atoms, we would multiply this by two to get a final answer of 20 valence electrons. So now let's try to draw a skeletal shape. We'll have oxygen as our central atom, and then two bonds to our fluorines, and I can draw in all of the lone pairs on the fluorine as well. Okay, so if we recall that each bond contains two bonding electrons, then in total, for this structure, we have 16 electrons drawn out of the 20. So for the remaining four electrons, I can add them as lone pairs on my oxygen atoms, like so. Okay, so this is the final Lewis structure of this molecule, and now we need to find out its hybridization, polarity, molecular geometry, and bond angle. Uh, so first, let's focus on its uh, shape, bond angle, and hybridization. So if we analyze the central atom, which is the oxygen, we'll see that the oxygen has two lone pairs and also two bonded atoms. So using a Vesper table, we can find out its molecular shape and electron geometry. So when we have two lone pairs and two bonded atoms, we have a bent molecular shape. And we have a tetrahedral electron geometry. And also, uh, the bond angles between tetrahedral shapes, or electron geometries, is around 109.5 degrees. And this means that our oxygen is sp3 hybridized. Okay, so this knocked off some of the uh, things we are supposed to look for. So basically, we just need to find out whether or not this molecule is polar or nonpolar. So first, let's find out if the oxygen-fluorine bond is polar or nonpolar. So to do that, we need to calculate the difference in electronegativity between our fluorine and our oxygens. Let's look up electronegativity values. And using this uh, periodic table that shows all the electronegativity values, uh, we can see that fluorine has an electronegativity value of 4. Oops. And oxygen has an electronegativity value of 3.5. So the difference between the two is 0 0.5. So therefore, the fluorine-oxygen bond is polar. And we know that because the difference in electronegativity is greater than 0 0.4 but it's less than 
So now that we know that the bonds are polar and the fluorines have a significant dipole moment kind of going towards them, we can show the dipole moments in our structure like so. And because of the bent shape of our molecule, we can also see that these dipole moments don't cancel out. So we have an overall non-zero dipole moment like so. So therefore, this molecule is polar. And this is because its bent shape does not cancel out the dipole moments from the more electronegative fluorine atom. And I'll also just add up here that this is called a non-zero net dipole moment. So this is why our molecule is polar. Okay, so that seems to answer all of the questions. So let's see what the junior tutor said. The Lewis structure will give us an insight into the hybridization, polarity, and molecular geometry and bond angle of a molecule. Okay, so they can be answered using Vesper by adding up the number of lone pairs and bonds, which is the steric number. Polarity is a result of the non-zero dipole moment in the molecule, mostly caused by the presence of lone pairs. So hence, it is important to draw correctly the Lewis structure of the molecule so that we can correctly apply the Vesper theory to this molecule to answer this problem. Okay, so they have the correct Lewis structure. And using Vesper, they see that the molecular geometry is bent. The bond angles are less than 109.5 degrees. And the presence of the two lone pairs also results in the repulsion of the central atom. This means that there is a non-zero dipole moment. The molecule is therefore categorized as a polar molecule. Two lone pairs in the central atom and the two bonds result in the steric number of four. So this means that it is sp3 hybridized. Okay, so this solution is correct. Also, the electronegativity difference between oxygen and fluorine is greater than 0 0.4, making the bonds polar, as well. The bent shape of the molecule prevents the dipole moments from canceling out. I'm just going to add that as well, but this solution is correct.